My name is Elizabeth Starr and I moved to Chiswick in 1991. The fact that I was going to be so close to the water, you know, if I really stretched I could throw a fishing line into the river and, I mean, you just fall in love with that view. I look at water every day, I hear it lapping as I go to sleep, I wake up to the sound of the water, sometimes the dreadful birds, the rowers and it Christmas time I have the added advantage of not actually going on the Christmas harbour cruises but I can listen to them all as they go past. <laughs> a couple of years ago the, um, the favourite song of the Christmas period was Achy Breaky Heart. So it would come up that river it's like oh here comes another one. <laughs> I often hear the fishermen not far from my window about four o'clock in the morning throwing out their lines and talking to each other. It's so still that you can actually hear them have conversations. You know when the tide's in or the tide's out because the fishermen arrive and um, it's often a family group that comes and men bringing their young children so that, that's fun. I'm forever taking photos of my sunset. It's my sunset down the Parramatta River towards the Blue Mountains. My unit faces north so I just go down to the lawn and the it is unbelievable. The last month, six weeks, when we've had these beautiful days, the sunsets are just amazing. And one night it was so spectacular that I wasn't the only one down there. People were grabbing their, their you know, cameras to come down and, and capture it. And then, of course, you, it's beautiful because it does wind like a snake. And then all of a sudden you hear the, the river cat coming slowly, wending its way through the curves. And it's just, it's an extraordinary, it's an extraordinary moment, actually. My neighbours think I'm mad, but there you go. Community in Chiswick, I think, is fairly representative in terms of what's happening with community everywhere, in that there is, sadly, less connection these days between people in communities. I think people are a little bit isolated in their, in their blocks of units. Within my own block, there was people there who had lived there since it was built originally. They've, they've moved on now. So they were well established in the body corporate and I participated in the body corporate because it's a good way to be part of that community. Over the years the nature of the residents has changed. At one time the majority of people were renters but now it's, it's in reverse. A lot of younger people have come in and bought this as their first home, not as an investment property which is great. So that's that's added a new dimension to life there and it's great too that they also participate on the body corporate so we're getting a lot of different ideas and people who are in the know and with great contacts for the, any work that needs to be done. I think times are changing in a way that we're becoming more connected with the people from our community. In our unit we certainly have a connection with the different people so that, that's always a plus if you know you've got neighbours who you can trust. I think the key to it all is if you can find someone you can trust your key with, you know you're in a good place. And I've got my key with several people because I'm always locking myself out. <laughs> we have some elderly people there who have their health problems. It's interesting, we all look out for them. I have an elderly man's key so that if he has a problem, he knows that I'll go down. When we've known people have been ill, People rally and they do the shoppy for them. So, you know, I know if I was sick tomorrow, I could go to a couple of people and they would help me. They'd take me to hospital, no worries. So that, that's, that's really comforting. And another man was very ill, so different people look after him. They look after different people, watch out for them. You know, if you don't see the light on, after a few days, someone will check. And that has happened which saved somebody's life not so long ago. It would have been wonderful to have some of the old buildings remain. I think the building around there started probably in the 60s when anything that was old was pretty well demolished, wasn't it? Which is a sad, sad for, for us. Where we're actually situated at number seven is built on the old timber mill. So as a consequence, we have a problem with termites. That's a leftover from days gone by. At least there's that older building down in that huge new estate further down the road. There's a couple of buildings around, but there isn't much, and that, that is disappointing. 
But I guess that's, that was the time people just knock things down. But we've still got the old steps there that lead down to where the, the ferry wharf is. I think part of um, being part of a community and feeling a sense of ownership is about having knowledge of the history and identifying interesting landmarks within your environment particularly for young children. Are we doing anything in the school at Abbotsford to tell them about the history of the local area? And so they can also bring that knowledge home to their families, many of who, of course, live in our units in that area. Interesting history. Many years ago, when we had the father and son working at the fish shop, by chance, one day, who should stop there to buy fish and chips but Alan Jones? And because Alan loved it so much, he then talked about it on the radio. And that was just the most amazing opportunity and advertisement for the people at the Chiswick Fish Shop. And in fact, you would often see a little mini bus full of seniors pull up and they'd run in to get their fish and chips and run out again because, of course, they probably dominate Alan's um, audience. So it became quite famous and you'd see little bus loads and other people collecting your stuff. It was very, very funny and very busy. But interestingly, Alan always maintained contact with the people at the cafe, and sadly the son died of leukaemia. And he was only in his 30s, he had you know, a couple of children, and it was, it was a very tragic time for the community because they were so well liked and loved and did a great job. And Alan went to the funeral, and as did members of the community, as like myself and another resident. And it really changed the dynamic for a while because there was so much sadness around that shop and subsequently they had to give up the lease and, and new owners came and it was, it's been such a long time actually since it had that feel again of those people who were really connected with us, weren't just there doing a job. So to have Ashley and um, Arnold there who were engaging so happily with everyone it's like we've resurrected, we've, it's almost a resurrection. And it's been a long time. Yeah, well, dear, it was sad. I really do think that cafe is a key factor. They're very much enjoying it, I think, particularly Ashley, who's a very um, sociable, outgoing young lady, and she talks to anyone, everyone, the bus drivers, anyone's welcome. She's also very kind, and if people can't get there and need something to eat, I know that she will take them food to their units or wherever they are. So that that's wonderful about that community. I know too that the, um, the grocer next door will also do that. So that's part of living in a small community where people can build up relationships. I talk to Ashley quite a lot in the shop and we've, we've talked about the possibilities of having a, a street party because one of her observations has been that she said, all these people come in here and none of them know each other. And so so many people are meeting each other for the first time. So that, that would be a fun thing to do.